Okay, good morning, students. Thank you. Um, good morning to our students online. Um, I earlier promised that I'll be having a marathon class today for my students' physics and chemistry. And this morning, I'm starting right away and I'll be beginning with chemistry, uh, physics. I particularly ask the students to write topics they will want me to cover, and they have done that already. And so one of the topics that was mentioned by them was AC circuit, alternating uh, current circuit, alternating current circuit. It's one of the exam banker. It's one of the questions that you, one of the topics that why brings almost every now and then. And so it's something that um, I need to teach so that they can understand well. And in case you are just coming to my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe to my channel so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified as you click the notification bell. Thank you. Let's go into business now. Okay, so we have works question here. One is from 2016 and the other is from 2012. We're going to solve that. But I wouldn't want to venture into solving the questions now. What I want to do is to explain the topic to some extent to my students before I venture into solving the questions above. So we understand that the, the AC circuit has to do with alternating current circuits. Okay, so now the general formula for alternating current circuits is given Remember, this is something that has to do with formula. So I'll be majoring on formula. But before I do that, before I do that, uh, it's important I show this. Let me wipe the board again and show you something. When you have something like this, this is what we mean when we talk about an alternating current. There were two main that we can attribute DC and AC to. One, um, Thomas Edison, two, Tesla. Tesla. Tesla was even like an apprentice also to say to Thomas Edison. But these two men, they were great when it comes to the subject we are considering DC and AC. Okay, so that's what uh, something when we say sinusoidal. Now, we go straight to equation now. Now, looking at the equation of AC circuit, the general equation, we're going to have something like this. Or oh, let's use not equals to WC where your i is instantaneous current is peak or maximum current now we have this to be our angular what speed or angular velocity and of course this is the time in second now we can also have this old thing here to be equal to sine 2 pi ft where our angular speed is equals to 2 pi f where our angular speed is equal to 2 pi f. So going back to the general equation, we can say we have, we can have it to be I not sine what? 2 pi f t. Students, are you following? The same thing applies to voltage. It can also be applied to voltage. And so you have something like this. So it can apply to both voltage 
and coins. I want to quickly wipe the board. Please, let's wipe very fast. Okay, so, so we have instantaneous voltage, peak voltage, or maximum voltage, and then we have this. The next thing we want to consider quickly, because the exam is just next week here, is we have root mean square value. Students, I am particular about calculation, and so the relationship or current root mean square value is equal to voltage, is equal to peak current divided by root 2. Or we say that it is 0 0.701 I naught. Therefore, the root mean square value of current is equal to 0 0.7071 not so that can also apply to the voltage which is equals to this or equals to this i'm sure that's clear enough right okay beautiful so that's clear enough so that's what we have that's the relationship between the voltage and the root mean square current and the peak current, or the root mean square voltage and the peak voltage. Please kindly note the, the relationship, very important or very pivotal. So that moves us to our Ohm's law. And we want to relate Ohm's law with a certain thing. From Ohm's law, what do we remember? Before Ohm's law, let me write this now. Inductive, inductive, and capacitive reactance. It's important to note here that what reactance is to an AC circuit is what resistor is to what a dc circuit i repeat it's important to know that that what reactance is so what then is reactance just as you have resistance resistance is opposition to the flow of what current what kind of current dc current yeah what kind of current ac current okay so we come from ohm's law now in our ohm's law V is equals to I R. Now, our inductive reactor, I'm coming back to the inductive reactance is given as XL and the formula is 2 pi F L. What that means again is that if inductive, inductive reactance plays the same role as resistance, what can I do? I can infer from Ohm's law, please follow me, as I x what L. Do you get that now? So that my x L is equals to V over what? I. Don't say I didn't tell you when we begin solving. So my x L now is V over I. So just as my I can be what? V over R. Do you understand me? Do you see what I did? I simply made this subject of formula. Okay, so now let's let's can I can I move on, please? Now again, for my root mean square uh value, excuse me, <clears throat> for my root mean square value, we are going to also see another relationship. So we go to capacitive reactance which is given as this, 1 over 2 pi Fc. So this is in farad. And this is in Henry.
or uh, I, Henry, I, not Y, please. Not uh, your normal spelling of Henry. Okay, so we have this. Now, it here means that my XC again is equals to what? I. Do you, do you get the lemma now? Okay, so take note of that. So that's basically what I'll be doing on this. My major concern is calculation, not story. Okay, not story. Okay, so we, we wipe that now again. And then we quickly look at impedance. Impedance basically is the device that incorporates both resistance, inductive reactance, and capacitive reactance. Okay, so impedance incorporates all. It's like you just have what you call resultant a vector resultant out that incorporates other sides are you following me now okay it's like in pythagoras theorem where you have the longest side incorporating the other two what side thank you so that's impedance there so now the impedance represented with z is given as r square plus xl minus xc square so that my x is equal to xl minus xc therefore impedance is equal to r square plus x square Are you done copying? Okay. Okay, so looking at what we have now, you'll see that this is the formula that relates impedance, resistance, this. So sometimes if you're not given, if you are given just this in an examination, and you're not given this obviously you can this become relevant and you just use it so you could see what i did here now so it's quite straightforward i'm sure there's no ambiguity or any confusion in what i've just done now uh another area you could expect question is that you can be asked question on resonant frequency and you for, you know that the Resonant frequency in physics is different from resonant frequency in chemistry. Like in chemistry now, if I ask you which of the following compound undergo resonance, maybe it's only two of you here that can answer it. The rest of you may not be able to answer. Okay, A, maybe I say alkene, B, alkene, C, alkano, and D, benzene. Okay, you know benzene undergo resonance, yes. So benzene is the answer. Now, but for physics, let's just write the resonant frequency equation or formula. But before that, um, we have what we call power factor. What do I call it? So, and that is your IV equals to cos phi. Now, this is so important for you to note. And from our formula, we know that our our W, which is the work done in an electrical circuit, is equal to IVT. So power is IVT over T. Cancel, cancel. So you have IV. We also know from Ohm's law that our this is equal to I square R what T. But power will not be what? I square R T divided by T cancel i square r so it depends on how the question is asked 
depending on the nature of the question, you will know exactly how you will go about this. Okay, so in case you are asked to find and the angle is given, you can quickly wangle your way through this very quickly. I'm sure that's very clear, right? Okay, thank you. So that takes us to the last part as I summarize and solve the question we have. And of course, you too, you are going to solve. So I'm not going to do what we call overfeeding. <laughs> oh. A resonant frequency. Now, if I may ask, what happened at resonant frequency? At resonant frequency, what really happened? Eh? Pardon? And what happened? What? Okay, let's first write the formula, and then I cannot ask what happened. Two pi over x c. So where you have your one over two pi square root of one over x c. So what happened at a sonar frequency? Thank you. They are what? They are they are in the same frequency. Yes. So we can say that XL at resonant frequency is equals to LD. Clap for Mr. Yomi and clap for my brother the bag. So that's what happened at resonant frequency. So you have this. So that if in the objective you will know what to say, that at resonant frequency, your inductive reactance and capacity reactance having this. So at resonant frequency. So let's quickly go to our solving. I'm sure I can wipe the board now, right? Okay. Now, let's solve the question. Okay, um, that's the brief explanation on AC circuits. And I'm sure <laughs> maybe you were lost in the course of the derivation I was doing navigating from one formula to another and you're wondering what's Tutoyomi doing this uh, this time maybe you're not clear maybe there were some things you need clarification on maybe there were some things that were ambiguous to you that is they were not clear enough they were looking somehow let me use my normal language they were looking wine wine to you so you can drop your question here and i'm going to help to demystify it help to break it down for you to your understanding God bless you. So you look out for the next video where I'll be doing the calculation proper. This is just an explanation. I'm going to the next video for calculation. Till I come your way again. Bye. Now.